my name is Judith Norell. For those of you who don't know me, I started Silver Moon Bakery at 2740 Broadway on the Upper West Side of Manhattan almost 20 years ago. It'll be 20 years, uh, the anniversary on November 8th. And if we are able to actually stop self-quarantining or walking around with masks, we will have a big celebration. So let's start baking. I hope you all were able to download your recipes from uh, our website. If not, here is a quick, you can take a photograph if you have a camera of what the ingredients are. And we're going to start with a large bowl. I have here all my equipment, just in case you want to see. I have here, let me show you. This is my kitchen. It's not a fancy kitchen. It may be fancier than some of you have, and it may be much simpler than some of you have. I have eggs. I have a little garbage pail here. I have salt. I have the eggs. I have the flour, sugar, water, oil. And believe it or not, this is yeast that I brought from the bakery. It's not the dried yeast, but there are equivalents in your uh, recipe. I have here my wonderful little digital scale because I do everything in grams. I have the water that's for me to drink. Uh, a knife, a couple of spoons. Uh, I have spoons over here uh, and the bowls. And over there in the corner, you see a sheet pan with a piece of parchment paper on it and my stove. Okay, I think that I probably will have forgotten something which I usually do, but that just makes it more interesting. So I love this digital scale, and this is the grandchild of many digital scales that I've had. And we actually have one at the bakery, though we also have five or six big mixers and smaller mixers. So I'm turning it on. It makes everything very precise. And I'm going to weigh out and move it along with me if you want. Took my biggest bowl just because it was the easiest to grab. I'm going, I don't think you can see that. Okay, here we go, there we go, okay. I'm going to go tear. That means the weight of the bowl has added weight to the scale. So when I push it down, it goes to zero. Those of you who converted your grams to cups and saucers, just bake along. I do have a measuring cup, but I use it only to scoop out uh, my ingredients. So I'm going to start with 330 grams of flour. By the way, I love using my hands. You're going to see me use my hands all the time. Now, the Silver Moon Bakery recipe calls for egg yolks. You can use whole eggs. They'll be just fine. We happen to use the egg yolks. We think it gives a richer um, bread because challah is bread. But you can use the whole eggs if you're nervous about cracking eggs. So I'm taking, I'm going to use the yolks. I'm going to crack my egg. I'm going to take out the, the whites, which weigh about, see if, say if an, an average egg weighs, weighs 45 grams, the yolk weighs about 30 grams, and the whites weigh about 15. So I'm putting my yolks right in there. The shells go in the garbage, and I'm going to save my egg whites, assuming that they have not been polluted by my cracking yolk. I'm going to save them and I'm going to make meringues at another point. I'll just keep them in the refrigerator. They'll be fine for about a week. So I've separated my egg from the egg white from the egg yolk. This I will put on side because that's the egg white. You don't need it. Okay. And then to this, I'm going to switch to the little bowl, go tear, and now I'm going to add I don't know these things by heart because we usually make not one challah, we usually make 50 challahs, 80 challahs. So it's uh, a little different. So I have to look at my recipe. 48 grams of oil. So I'm going to pour very carefully. Oil's pretty heavy. 
I hope you're joining along with me if you want. 40, 48, whoops, eight, eight is hard to do. There we go, 48, exactly. Okay, and then I'm going to add 138 grams of water. Now water is very deceptive. You think you're pouring in a little bit and you're pouring in a lot. So I'm going to use my measuring cup. I only use because it has a spout. Makes it much easier to pour. I'm going to go tear on my trusty little scale and I'm going to add 138 grams of water. Perfect. Okay. Now, those of you who bought the Hala Dry Ingredients Kit, which has the sugar, the salt, the dry yeast uh, already mixed, don't worry about it. Okay. So, first I'm going to mix this together. I love using my fingers. Okay. Love using my fingers, but not everybody does. So, I'll just mix this up a little bit, as you can see. Okay, and then I'm gonna, I think I'll add the sugar to the, to the flour mix first. I do it differently each time, it always comes out beautifully. So I'm gonna add 33 grams of sugar, and I'm just using a spoon for that. A heapy two, a, a teaspoon, a te okay, there we go. That's the end of the sugar for today. And salt is seven grams. I usually take, take it like this. I have this really cute uh, salt holder that I got many, many, many years ago. And so I, will, I won't even bother to go tear. I'm just gonna add seven to this number, okay, so. Two more grams. Perfect, okay. Finally, dry yeast. Now, I don't have dry yeast. I brought fresh yeast. We tend to use fresh yeast at the bakery. So I have some. And they're different proportions. I gave you both in the recipe. If you have dry yeast, add your eight grams. Otherwise, I'm gonna add 22 grams of fresh yeast. I like the idea of fresh yeast because when I started baking, it felt to me more professional. I don't know why, just like we all have these fantasies in our, in our minds. To me, dry yeast seemed a really professional thing. And also the packets of yeast that I was able to buy in the supermarket when I was first baking by myself was so tiny. Uh, so there are people in the waiting room. Let's see if we can just let them all in. Okay, now how do I get back to this close? Okay, okay. So I have here all my pretend dry ingredients. Of course, the yeast is not dry. Now, this is the fun part, okay? I'm going to start mixing. So I'm adding the egg, oil, water mixture to the, let's make sure we got it all there. And I'm going to use my hands, which I did wash. I've never used a spoon actually. Let me see what it feels like to use a spoon. Eventually you have to use your hands. You have to use your hands. See, this stuff is all gunking up. Okay, here we go, hands. Got to get down and dirty when you're a bread when you're a bread baker, and that's one of the pleasures. So the way I do it is I fold over in the bowl, incorporating everything little by little. 
down at the bottom, there is usually a whole lump of flour that you haven't noticed. Okay, okay so now I'm starting to mix. It feels really nice. It feels moist, but not wet. It feels really good. Now, in your recipe, you have something that is called an autolyse, A-U-T-O-L-Y-S-E. It was a technique devised or discovered by a French baker, uh, Raymond Calvel, and it actually eases bakers' work a lot. Uh, because you leave the dough for 15 minutes, the gluten starts developing, and then you find it much easier and much quicker to finish the mix. So a 15-minute autolyse is what we would usually do, but because this is not an, an, an ever-ending baking class, I'm going to continue mixing and pretend that I don't know about that, which means I will mix probably for about 10 minutes. That's the old technique. So I'm going to take a little bit of flour. It's hard for me to mix in the bowl. I'm taking it out, putting it here, on my countertop with a little flour to keep it from sticking. And now I'm going to mix. And I just mix by doing quarter turns. I only use the heel of my hand. The fingers are only for uh, turning, but the palm of the hand, the palm of the hand, the heel of the hand is what really gets it going. And if your flour, if your top gets dry, just add a little more flour. Nothing's going to happen. Okay, somebody has asked me to go a little slower. I'm very excited, which is why I'm going fast. Okay, so I have mixed my dough and now I am kneading it. Kneading it is spelled with a K, K-N-E-A-D to knead, which means to fold in, to fold in, to incorporate all the ingredients. So now my dough is getting a little feisty. It's a little harder to mix because the gluten is really developing and it is tense. Believe it or not, it is tense. So, okay, my dough is getting tense. There are not three eggs for the dough, there are three eggs for the recipe. There are two egg yolks for the dough. The third egg is used for egg wash on top of the hull to give it that beautiful shine that we're all so familiar with. Okay, so now my dough, as I said, is beginning to get recalcitrant. It doesn't want to shake. So I'm gonna put it aside for a few minutes. Believe it or not, it's going to relax and then I will continue shaping it. Meanwhile, I have, I'm going to, I have here, uh, this is called a dough scraper. You can get them uh, in many, many uh, hardware stores. I'm gonna put my dough on the side. I'm gonna scrape my countertop clean. You can do that also with a knife. You don't really need this. Get rid of some of this. Uh, put it in my garbage bowl. Once this has been finished, being mixed, you're going to have to let it ferment for about an hour. So I'm just putting it on the side for a few minutes. I'm going back to my first dough, the one that we're mixing together, and I'm going to give it a few more, a few more turns, quarter turns folding down and sealing with the heel of my hand till it gets tough again. Okay, that feels pretty good to me. You already, I'm gonna take a new bowl and I'm going to oil it a little bit because I want my dough not to stick to it when I wanna take it out to start shaping it. So I'm going to put a drop of oil 
in my bowl. You can also spray it if you want. I don't really like spray, but I use it when I need to. And I'm going to put it in top side down first to oil the top. Wish it around. So now it's shiny with all that oil. It'll be much easier to take out. I happen to have a beautiful piece, I think, of waxed cloth, which I'm trying to replace my plastic wrap with, just so that the top won't dry out. I'm going to cover it, leave it someplace, the other side, leave it over here in the corner. Okay. It's going to rise for about an hour. We'll check it in a while. You will know, by the way, that your dough is ready when you can stick your, it's got, it's, it's, it's doubled in size and you can stick your finger in it and see a beautiful fingerprint. Don't stick it in all the way so that it's going to make a real hole in it, but it will make an indentation and then relax. Mine is getting very nice, but it's still too small. It should really fill up the bowl. I don't think you need to worry about overproofing. In this case, I think you need to worry about underproofing. Dough that has fermented too long, after two hours, no matter what, it's good to go. If it's overproofed, you knock it down, you let it rise a little less than you did the first time, and it will rise quicker, then you shake it. If by any chance you used all three eggs, there is no problem. Your bread will be just as fine. You may have to add a little more flour to uh, make sure that your dough is not too wet. Here we go. I'm going to cut a larger piece. I, I have a lot of wood here. I'm going to cut it in three equal pieces for a challah. Okay, I have this dough. As you can see, it's a, it's a rectangle. Now I'm going to flatten it out with my fingertips. It's one of the few times I use my fingertips. I'm folding it over like an envelope with the palm of my hand. You can see that there is one fold. I'm folding it over again, really like an envelope. Two folds, that's second fold. The third fold, I'm sticking my finger, my thumb of my left hand, because I'm right-handed, inside to make a pocket. And I am folding that pocket and sealing it, always with the palm of my hand. And then I'm going to start rolling it out. So that's pretty long, but it's going to get longer. I'm going to do the same thing as I did with strand number one, with strand number two. Flatten it out, start folding over, and you'll notice when I fold over, even the first time, I stick my thumb in. That just gives me a little more space to fold. I'll show it to you again. This first fold inside, second fold on the outside. Flatten it out, so it's easy to fold a flat thing. This time I'm really sticking my thumb in. And I have sealed end to end. It's not completely sealed yet, but you can see that I have sealed it end to end. And I will start rolling it out. I roll with the palms of my hands. I do not roll palms of my hands. I don't like rolling out with the fingertips. All they do is make funny shapes. My thumb, my left thing, my left thumb goes in here. I will fold it down and then I will hit that extra flap with the palm of my right hand. I will not hit my thumb. And then I will fold it down a little more. Keep going like this like this, like this, like this. All 
all sealed, nicely sealed, because my thumb gave me space to do it. If I, when you stick your thumb in a dough, actually what you're doing is also stretching the dough so that there's room to fold it over. Otherwise you would, and when I started baking, someone said, after your thousandth baguette, you'll know how to bake. So I've done many more than a thousand baguettes. Now I'm doing second fold, second fold, always with the left hand thumb, or if you're right hand, if you're left handed, your right hand thumb, or it's like playing the violin if you're left handed. I don't know how you do that. Okay, third one is the slowest because I'm pushing down a lot of dough. Okay, and rolling it out, rolling it out. Rolling it out. Oh, it feels so nice. And I didn't even seal it properly because I'm so busy talking. I'm going to put the recording on the internet if it's de halfway decent. A really lovely guy, uh, a wonderful man named Richard Robbins has been helping me do this. But since you know you're seeing me on my cell phone, because that's the only way I could get the right angle in my kitchen, the video will not be like uh, Jacques Pepin's videos with three cameras around and special studio lighting. The foldings help the dough keep its shape and stay together because otherwise they would come apart when you break them. And we actually, yes, and we fold all, it helps, it develops Folding helps the yeast activate itself because why does a dough puff up before baking? The yeast is munching on the flour and water and it is exuding, uh, uh, what's it called, carbon dioxide, not carbon monoxide, and alcohol when it bakes. So the puffiness expands the bread. So I have my three folds. I'm making the, the strands equal. You can see they are more or less equal in length. And now anyone who has ever braided a child's hair will know what to do. I'm going to show you two ways of braiding. Right over left into the center Let's see if I can do it this way so you can see. Okay. Here, well, let's try again. Okay. Right over. You, oh, you seal it at the top. I'm sorry, I forgot to say that. Just hold it. Now you don't have to seal it a lot, but just make sure it's okay. Here we go. Right over center, left into center. Right over center, left into center. Right over center, left into center. Right over center, left into center, right over center, left, right, left. Then you've got these three little knobs, you squeeze them together, you tuck them under, give them a little hit, they'll proof afterwards. And here, you'll do the same thing, flat now. And oh, this could look nicer. I braid very loosely. Some people braid very tightly. Tight is probably better, but you do what you do. So there you have a challah. It just happens to be unbaked and happens to be uh, not edible at the moment unless you like eating raw flour and eggs and whatever. So I'm going to put that, uh, I'll put that here on my baking sheet. And I'm actually going to turn my oven on, which you can do in a little while because this dough was already ready to use. Uh, I'm going to turn my oven on, and I'm just going to set my temperature. Okay, and it will beep when it's ready. So I'm going to show you a roll, much easier to do. A roll could be two ounces, which is about 56 grams. Take a piece of dough, roll it around two fingers a couple of times, take it off. Stick it up, 
there you go. Put it on the shoe. I'll do that again. It's like tying, if you ever sewed, it's like taking a piece of thread and making a knot in it. Professional tailors don't do make, don't make knots, but a comment. Yeah, the question, uh, oven preheated to what to come Oven of the oven is preheated, by the way, sorry, that was a good question, someone asked, uh, to 385 degrees. So, these are called knots. K-N-O-T-S, not N-O-T-S. Round and round, you can make a miniature hollow if you want. That's the knot. One stuck up, one stuck down. You can also make a pretzel shape if you want. Pretzel shape is you hold it like this, twist it around, put it down, and fold it up. There you go. You now have a pretzel hollow. I'll do that again. Take a piece of dough, roll it out, make a big loop, big loop, twist that big loop. There are fancier ways of doing this. Twist it again, fold it up, and press it down. I'll do that one more time, just so you can see. Collar dough is very soft. It's much softer than uh, a lean dough. Lean dough doesn't have oil or eggs or anything except salt and sometimes not even salt if you're, if you're from Italy. Now this piece is too small. Uh, if you're from Italy, as you know, Italy had a tradition of saltless bread, that, that was because the Medici's were some admitting somebody to the waiting room. Okay, so uh, salt-free bread because the Medici's, I believe it were, uh, the rulers of Florence uh, charged, charged for salt. And so the Florentines and that whole Tuscan area learned to make bread without salt. Uh, and if you've ever eaten it, or baked it. It's, it's a different experience. The crust is also not, a uh, crust is much thicker. I would call it cruder, but I have baked in Italy. I've actually baked with a, an Italian baker near Fugitsano. I'm gonna make one more pretzel roll. Hold it to pieces, twist two times. I have to put it down in order to fold it. Fold it in the middle. There you go, you have your pretzel. This is a teeny tiny one. Or you might want to make just a little roll. Say a two ounce roll, that's what we do. So you take some dough, squish it together. Squishing, squishing, squishing. And then you start circling. You want to get a seal on the bottom and you want to get it nice and round on the top. Well, this doesn't look very good, but it'll be fine. Because I started out with a really not beautiful piece of dough. It was, it was already cut. So you have a roll here. If you want to make a design on it, which will help it open up. So I'm going to make a cut here. Cut one cut two cuts. Sort of like a flower, if that's what you consider a flower. I am going to show you the two-fold challah that we make at the bakery. Okay, so our challahs at the bakery are a pound and a half, but for a home, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to have two pieces, and you'll see me folding again, 
two pieces at 225 grams each because a pound is 453 grams. Let's forget the three. And I'm going to weigh out, if I can, let's see, 225. Ops, I missed it, so you need to add a little more. Ah, uh, too much, take it off. There we go, perfect. 225 grams on the nose. 213, 219. Oops. 228, I'm gonna say that's fine. Put my scale out of the way, and you're gonna see me folding again, pulling out with the palms of my hands. So now I'm going to make the two braided hollow. My thumb, remember the thumb? This is a, a wider piece, so it's much easier for me to hide my thumb in the dough, fold it down. There I have my first fold, my envelope fold. Turn it around, fold over the second time with the heel of my hand. If I folded it with my fingers, I would feel like a wimp. You can do it, but it doesn't really work because there are places where your fingers are not going to flatten it out. Turn it around a third time. Give it that good, satisfying punch, and now bang away as much as you want. Baking, by the way, is also very satisfying because you can get out your aggression by banging. I'm not banging here very hard because my countertop shakes and you can hear all the sound. Okay, say, say they have been, okay. I know I'm using my fingers, but I'm cheating. When you're at home, you can do whatever you want. Okay, now I'm gonna roll out. And I do wanna make sure that my seams are sealed. These seams, huh, are pretty sealed. Not great, not great, but good enough for me. Okay, let's see, which piece was it? I think it was this piece. Okay, this is piece number two, okay. Also, my dough's getting a little dry. I'm gonna take just a little bit of water and then a little bit of flour on my countertop just to make it easier for me to work. Okay, fold over once, bang, 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 bang. Fold over twice with the thumb in the middle and the pinky on top. Okay, here we go. You can also go like this if you want to get it a little longer. Okay, final fold. And if your dough is too dry, it may be difficult for the seal to really work, so put a little bit of water on it. And I'm rolling, 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 rolling. Now, I come to you as an expert, but look what I see. You see how it opened up? No big deal, I'll seal it again. It would be easier if I had a table that didn't make so much noise. Meanwhile, this one has become kind of stubborn and tough, so I let it rest for a minute. Now I'm gonna continue rolling it up. Okay. And most important is to make sure that they are the same length. Otherwise, you're gonna get into deep trouble. Okay, now. This was taught to me years ago. I've made a cross. And now I'm going to go right, left, up, down, right, left, up, down, right, left, up, down. And, whoops, it's a little, a little short, okay. There we go. You have now here a two braid challah, which actually ends up being much higher 
much higher, it will puff up, it will proof up, and it will bake up much higher than the three braid collar. So now I have here all my designs that I have made. And uh, we use parchment paper. You can use tin foil. You can just oil your pan if you want, but then you're gonna to have to scrub your pan afterwards. And I'm lazy, I don't like to scrub my pan. I'd rather just have the parchment paper thrown out. Say you want to make a loaf, just a Pullman loaf. Uh, I have a Pullman pan. If you wait a second, I'll go get one. It's an old nasty one that I brought back from the bakery just for demonstration. I would put oil on this if I'm baking. So I'm going to now show you how to make a, a rectangular Pullman loaf hollow. So again, you know, it's the famous, the famous fold, folds over. So I have made basically a square, a square. It doesn't look very beautiful, doesn't matter. Now I'm going to fold it another way. And this time I am using my fingers. I folded it about halfway over. So I have my famous envelope, except it's a different uh, proportion. It's not long and skinny. It's maybe three to four. So the ratio of three to four, two to five. And then I'm going to do the final, the final. And in my sheet pan here, which I will oil, particularly the sides, because you don't want the sides to stick. Now, this piece of dough that I'm shaping, that I've shaped, is much too small for this sheet pan, which should probably take a pound of dough. And this dough weighs what? 250 grams. Like that. Let's see. 219 grams, even less. Let's see if I can add a little bit because I have some dough left. Let's see how much this will add up to. Okay, 321 grams. So what I'm going to do, believe it or not, is just add them to the mix. Messy, who cares? Fold it over. So you see it sticking out there, doesn't matter. Folding it over, folding it over again. And sometimes I use both hands. Now this time, because I don't like those messy ends that I, from the dough that I added, which were just strands that I used, I'm going to fold over the other way. And this time I need my fingers. So I folded it over another way. And then I'm going to fold it over the fourth time. And then again, fold it over. And this time I am again sealing, sealing, sealing. So important to seal, otherwise. And of course, if you get, if you're in a hurry, freeze your dough, take it out, let it come to room temperature and continue working with it. Nothing's going to happen. But remember to cover it and cover it with plastic. I hate plastic, but it does keep out the dryness and the air. So I have here a terribly sealed, because this dough has been so worked, it says, Forget it, Charlotte. They don't care. I don't care what you like. What you like. So, I mean, you really have to be kind to dough. Not super kind, but kind. Okay, I'm going to wet this a little bit because it's really not happy with what I've been doing. I have knocked it around. I have shaped it. So, another question. Oh, trying to answer everybody's questions and still do my own thing. Very hard. I'm going to pretend that it's beautifully sealed. It's not. But I'm putting it in this pan. 
let it be what it is. It's gonna to be too small, but you can see it will rise up. It will eventually proof itself. And then I want to urge you to score it, to make a line or several designs to cut into the seal of the outside dough that has been expanding very beautifully. Why do you want to put a cut in it? Because it will allow the dough to expand even more. Think about it. When you have, when you have, uh, I'm going to talk about that in a second because even though it's not quite ready, I'm going to stick this pala in the oven in a minute. But first, I have to make an egg wash. Okay, so let me find something to make egg wash in. I'll make egg wash in, in this bowl that I used before. Uh, I'm going to put this down here. Working on a countertop is very different from working on a, on a, a shaping table. I'm going to crack my egg. This time I'm going to use the egg yolk and the egg white. And I'm going to mix it up. Now, I find personally that when I mix up egg, eggs in their, in their entirety, Sometimes the yolk and the uh, white don't really want to come together. So I'm gonna add just a drop of water, and I'll use a spoon just because I get very happy with my largesse, and then things don't do too well. Okay, much easier, much easier now. Okay, so I'm gonna take my trusty little brush. And I'm going to brush all over the holly. You can do it with your fingers too, nothing wrong with that. This is what is going to give the shine to your beautiful bread. Now, because each of our ovens is different, even though I said set your oven to 385, who knows if it's going to be hotter. Or, or, or colder, and who knows if it's going to be evenly uh, the same temperature. Sometimes in a corner, you'll find that it's hotter. Sometimes you'll find that it's colder. So I'm just, uh, here we go, I'm just uh, egg washing everything. Now, I happen to love sesame seeds. And in the Middle East, and on sometime, and oh, on, on the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah, we make ha round challahs because that's very symbolic of the new year, uh, the beginning of life, uh, the cycle of life, whatever you want, the end of reading the Torah, whatever, whatever it stands for, for you, uh, or for anyone who celebrates any kind of holidays. Uh, so we make uh, round collars and we add either raisins or multi-seeds. And we also make whole wheat collars. But the multi-seeds have a lot of seeds in them. I happen to love sesame seeds. So I'm going to put sesame seeds on my challah. Why not? Not on everything, just a few things. There we go. Okay. So it looks as if I didn't forget anything. You can see maybe in this camera how shiny it is. I'm going to stick it in the oven for 15 minutes, and then I'm going to turn the oven around. But I think the rolls will be done in 15 minutes because they're much smaller. They have more crust to crumb ratio. They're much lighter, and you don't want them to burn. OK, sticking them in the oven. Wish me luck. But meanwhile, I will show you a bread that I brought from the bakery uh, to show you what our challahs look like. Okay, here's our challah. This is a two-strand challah. We put egg wash all over, but some places also we put six 
on a sheet pan. We have a very large sheet pan, 24 by 18 inches, uh, but sometimes they stick together. So there'll be lighter edges. Uh, you can see here where it's stuck a little bit to the other uh, hollow right next to it, but it's a beautiful piece of, it's a beautiful piece of bread. Makes great French toast if you don't, if you like French toast. Now I hear my oven beeping, which means that I have to turn the bread around. I'm going to bring it out and show you to show it to you what it looks like at this moment. So you can see it's halfway through. But the rolls may be done. I'm not sure. Okay. Warts and oil, warts and all. I didn't put enough egg wash on some of the things, but the hollows themselves are really beautiful. I'm going to take off the rolls, which are overdone, which are done, put them somewhere to cool off. Never eat hot bread. I'm turning down my oven. It's a little too hot. I'm turning it down to 350. I'm um, getting a plate to put the hollow rolls on. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Sorry. Okay, here we go. Let's see if this is better. Okay, here I am with my plate. I'm going to take the hollow rolls. I made my oven a little too hot. It should have been, this oven should have been 365. Okay, so here are my hollow rolls. I'll show them to you in a little minute. I want to put the rest of the bread back into the oven. And I'm steadying it for another 10 minutes. Okay, so I hope you can see. This is the pretzel one, it got a little fat. Pretzel dough does not expand as much. Here's the little, little, little different shapes. Little different shapes. Ah! The timer. Let's go look. Let's go look. There we go. I'm not sure which part of the camera works. Okay. And I'm turning off the timer and I'm turning off the other. Okay. Now, I want you to look at these breads. I hope you can see them, but I really enjoyed being with you and for you allowing me to show you how I love baking, how you can bake. Bread is very forgiving. It is very enriching. It is very satisfying to do. And I really thank you very much for joining me. And I do have a request for you. You can, ail, you can, you can email me, again, info at Bakery. Dot com with questions. One thing I would like you to, uh, to do if you can and if you know about these things is follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Our handle is Silver Moon Bakery, whatever that means. But the more friends, the more people who follow us, uh, the better in this weird world we're living in now. And also sign up for our newsletter because not only do I tell talk about classes and new stuff that we're making at the bakery. For example, in two weeks, we're gonna start our uh, key lime tart. And we now have ice creams, and we just made a new ice cream, made a walnut, things like that. I'll tell you about that. And I'll also link you to really interesting articles and videos that I have discovered. And you can see some of this stuff on YouTube. 
It's not professional. There is a wonderful man named Richard Robbins, who I'm very grateful to, who uh, has been trying to help me post these videos on YouTube, but they're so unprofessional, as I can see from what just happened to me. So tell your friends about these classes. Remember that we are, we are baking with the donations and handing them out to people who really deserve our applause, okay? Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Be well. Keep the faith. We will get through this together. Bye.